About two years ago, you were probably seeing a lot of edits like this. This editing style is what I like to call the zoom style because the clip slowly zooms in or out when the edit fully starts. This editing style was originally created by Yonix, but it eventually became more popular and now it's used by many editors and nowadays it's being overused. What I mean by that is that more people are starting to rely on this editing style because it's easy to make, it's smooth, and it racks up a lot of views. But because of that, no one's innovating. And since no one's innovating, we end up with people using aggressive music like funk with a relaxing editing style like this one. And that kind of makes an imbalance. People start to rely more on this and they don't really become as good as they can. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is teaching you guys different editing styles that you can combine with the zoom style or create your own. This is to bring back the innovation we used to have within the community before everyone started using the same style. So sit back and enjoy. But before we go into how to make it, we need to know how it actually started. So I'll be giving you a quick rundown on the history of video editing and how we got here in the first place. During the early 2000s, NLE editing was made, which started an uprising of video editing softwares like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. This allowed editors to add changes to the previous clip without regard or impact to the clip itself. During this time, YouTube or any other social media platform was in its early stages of growth, but in the early 2010s, YouTube started gaining traction and NLE editing softwares grew. TikTok released in the late 2016, as it was seen as something new. Due to TikTok's shoving content into your face approach, it was more likely to gain views there than YouTube, starting a trend of short form edits till this day. Before I continue, I would like to tell you that there are two forms of video editing. Short form edits, which are high octane fast paced clips with flashy effects made to hype you up. And long form edits, which are meant to keep you entertained in the long run with less flashy effects and tamer approach like a TV show. In this video, I will primarily be talking about short form edits. Just a few months ago, there wasn't a lot of development within the editing scene as most people stuck with the zoom style. This is when the edit is just the clip slowly zooming in and transitioning to the next one. Because of that, innovation started to slow down. But in this video, I'll be teaching you guys other stuff to help you create your own editing style quicker and even improve your edits in general by giving you the knowledge you need to combine styles together with the hope of helping the innovation continue. It's not bad to copy other styles, but it is bad not to put any effort into it. That's why I'm putting this out there. Okay, so the first and most important thing we have to do is actually turn off auto updates on Google Play. So to do that, we go into the Google Play Store, click on your icon, click on settings, net network and preferences, and turn off auto update apps. This is really important because this means that when we install our lower version CapCut, it doesn't automatically update to the most latest version, which is very bad. I do not recommend using CapCut unless you're willing to spend the money. So search up up to down on Google and it should be the first link that pops up. Just keep scrolling down until you come across older versions. So yeah, right here it says older versions. Click on that and it will take you to a page with a bunch of them. I already have mine selected, so let me just go back. I'm going to be using version 9.0 because that's the best one for me. It has all the features I want and I already have this installed. If you need to install it, go to the bottom and click this big green button that says download. It will just start down the file to you. But in order to actually install it, you need to go to my files, downloads, and it'll be the first thing there. Click on it and then it will do its thing. If it gives you any pop up, just keep saying yes. I already have it so I don't need to reinstall it. But yeah, this is the only way I know to down version 
your CapCut. And now with that out of the way, we can actually get into the edit. So, the zoom style is the easiest editing style you can make. So, to recreate it, well, first you need to gather some clips. I'm going to grab three random clips from my library. This is just going to be an example. So, for short form content, you typically want to use the 1x1, one one, which is on Instagram, or the 9x16 for TikTok. Most editors nowadays use the 1x1 one one, since YouTube now supports it, but on phone, 9x16 would be the default. Make sure to fully scale in your footage before we get into the actual editing. This is to give us an idea of how far we can zoom in and out. Now, I want you to cut the footage about 2 seconds into the actual clip to give us a, enough leeway for the speed to ramp up. The more shorter the clip is, the more aggressive your zoom style can be. Once you're done setting up your clips, I want you to place one keyframe at the beginning and one at the end of your clip selected. Go to the first keyframe you made and zoom in as far as you think is right. Make sure that it's not too blurry and that when you do the zoom out or zoom in, it is actually noticeable. So once you set that up, there will be this small graph icon that will appear when the two keyframes are made. And click on that, click on the linear, the straight line, and then copy the graph I'm making right now. Now that you've created your first graph for it, you just need to copy and paste that same style that you just did, the same graph layout, to the rest of your footage. Of course, you can tweak the graph to fix up some issues with the graph not properly speeding up, or it's too fast in the beginning, and then the zoom out is too slow. So once you finish your keyframing and graphing for all of your scenes, you should end up with something like this. To do speed ramping, we first need to find the speed tab, which is the second thing you can find when clicking on the clip. When you click it, you get two options, normal and curve. Normal just changes the speed to a constant, and curve gives you a bunch of presets that allow you to speed up the footage and slow it down. We don't want to use a custom preset, we want to make our own, so click on the flat one and delete the dot in the middle. And as you can see, you can move these dots up and down and it'll change the speed of the clip. Just remember that everything you change here will affect the footage above, so it will get slightly longer, meaning that you would have to cut down the clip. So make sure that when you're done changing the graph, it is just as long as how you left it before. So from one second to one second, not 1.5 or 0.5, just as long as it was before. So then it matches the beat and you don't have to go through it and re-edit the length. Now what I want you to do is copy the graph I made, but make sure that it stands out within your edit because depending on the length of the clip you have for your edit, you might need to make the graph more aggressive. So you do that by making the speed up or slow down much higher or lower. Now that you've added speed ramp to all your effects, we can get into making the twitch shake. To do this, we go into the animations tab, which is one of the first things you see, and scroll until you find rock horizontal or vertical. 
make sure to set the animation length to 0.3 seconds so then you can feel the aggressiveness of the shake. And if you feel like it, you can always follow up with rock horizontal rather than a rock vertical to add a little bit of variety. But it honestly just depends on the clip. Once you've done this, find the effects tab. You can find this by clicking off any clip you have selected and it will be at the bottom. Scroll down and you should find the shake effect. It is almost always in the top trending because it's pretty popular. If you can't find it, you can always use the search tool. Now, I want you to decrease the length of the shake effect to about half of the clip you have. Set one keyframe at the very end and set everything to zero, then one at the very front and copy the settings. Now, if you check your display where your edit is, you'll see that it's got a little bit more aggressiveness to it, which is what we want. If you don't notice it yet, you should probably increase the intensity and the speed and check again. Once you're satisfied with your shake effect, and just keep copying and pasting it, but also make sure that it matches the length of your clip accordingly, so about half its length. The first effect I'll be teaching you guys is the Omino glitch. This effect is done with this one very specific type of um, glitch overlay. And if you want to recreate it for yourself, the description to both overlays I will be using is in the description. So feel free to download it from there. The first thing we need to do is copy our clip. Once we've copied the clip, just scroll back and find the overlay button and realign it to be exactly on top of your other clip that you just copied. Then find the Omino glitch overlay that you just downloaded and scale it up until it covers the whole screen. Then I need you to go into blend mode and set it to light. After that it should look something like this. Once you've set up your overlay, I want you to go back to the other clip that you copied and pasted and go to adjust, then copy the settings I'm going to apply to it right now. If you want to make your own graph like this, all you need to know is that the further you go to the right, the more obvious the shadows get, and the more you go to the left, the more obvious the lights get. So you basically want to tweak the graph until you can find the best balance of both. So just play around with this until you can find something you like. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, we can get into the actual animation. To do this, we scroll until we can find the masking tool and select the horizontal mask. Then rotate it 90 degrees and match the overlay with the exact same frame where the Omino Rich begins and place a keyframe right there. Once that's done, slide the mask all the way over to where the Omino Glitch ends and set another keyframe there. Once that's done, just copy the graph that I made here. The second effect that I'll be teaching you is the half tone shape which is just a regular twitch shake but with a half tone overlay. This overlay is also in the description with the Amino Glitch overlay, so you don't have to worry about finding it. This overlay is used with many shakes, but it's typically used with the warp shake and the twitch shake, which I'll be teaching you the warp shake later on. First, you need to cut the half tone overlay to about where your shake ends, then scale the half tone overlay until it covers your entire screen. After this, go to animation and match the same shake and shake length you used on your actual clip to this overlay. Once you've done that, go into the blend mode and set it to overlay. This makes the image behind it much more vibrant and it also makes the blacks pop out a bit more. 
After that, I want you to set one keyframe at the very beginning of when your shake ends on the overlay. Then go to the very end of the clip and set the opacity of that overlay to zero. Now, once you've done that, just copy the graph that I made right here. The warp shake is typically used on manga edits, but in this case, I'll show you how to use it on other styles. The first thing you need you to do is make sure you have your twitch shake ready. The warp shake will not work unless you have a shake for it to be applied to. So go to your effects tab as usual, then search up a bad TV in the search bar. If you can't find it there, you can always just scroll to the glitch tab and you should find the effect bad TV. Now just apply this to when your beat starts. Don't just keep spamming the same effect across all your beats, unless you're trying to achieve the manga style. Now set the object to all and shrink the effect to half or a third of your clip. After that, set two keyframes, one at start and end. Set the intensity of the one at the end to zero. Now duplicate the effect five to six times to achieve more aggressiveness in the effect. 